whenever you guys are ready. Alrighty, hi, I'm Camden Sharkey from Liberty High School. And I'm John Kelman from Arvada West High School. Um, and we're here to talk about adjusting to adversity, especially with everything going on with COVID right now. So let's get right into it. John, you good? Yep. Okay. There go. So some of the things that we're gonna be talking about today um, or what is adversity? I can see if John wanted to say his. Um, sure. And so then we're going to talk about the effects of that adversity. Uh, coping with the negatives and stress management. Um, advancing with the positives for growth. We're going to go over what to do with that information. And then we're going to talk a little bit about our own school's response to our situation. And then we have a Kahoot so that we can kind of get everyone involved at the end of this. And then we'll have some time for some questions. Sorry, John, I ran over you on that one. Um, Very good. So first of all, just to define adversity. So we're all using one shared um, definition. Oh. Loading, I think. There we go. Um, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, of course, just so we can establish our definition um, for everyone, um, adversity is a state or instance of serious and continued difficulty or misfortune. And through my own research um, with adversity, I broke it down um, into the four most important categories of that. Um, so four different types of adversity that people can face in their everyday lives. The first one is physical. Um, so that one comes with having a physical disability, being blind, um, being deaf, overweight or obese, having a chronic pain, basically can in, um, infringe on, you know, being able to have um, what is what would be a normal life um, or, you know, something that would bring misfortune to your own life. Um, for mental adversity, an instance of mental adversity is having a mental illness, something that would also, once again, bring upon some misfortune to your own life. Um, emotional misfortune is kind of different. Some of that comes into play with emotional maturity um, or even just being able to have control over your own emo emotions and making sure that um, your emotions aren't happening to you. You're able to kind of respond to that and make sure that um, you're in control when it comes to that. And lastly, social, uh, social adversity, that comes with um, social interaction, um, because if you have, if you face some sort of social adversity, it can really limit your social skills, or being limited in your social skills can limit um, making friends, getting jobs, maintaining a family um, relationship, and can get in the way and cause, once again, more misfortune in your life. Cool, so we're gonna kind of talk about um the effects of adversity through the three E's, uh, event, experience, and effects. I found the best way to explain this is through giving you an example that we can all understand, the pandemic. The event would be the threat of getting sick, economic uncertainty, and the disruption of your relationships. However, everyone's experiences are different based on several factors, including financial and social resources. These experience-based factors in turn result in specific effects, such as long-term health problems or unemployment. Now, I would like you to take about 30 seconds and think about some effects associated with adversity that you've either experienced or you know somebody who's experienced. Hopefully you were able to think of something, but I came up with, I found a couple um, to support whatever you found. Um, for most, some easy answers are worsening physical health, um, consuming junk food, a lack of exercise, uh, depression, stress, um, finding ways to escape, um, are all some common ways that people um, cope with adversity. Um, if you want to click to the next one, Camden. Um, 
Um, these effects kind of differ from person to person and situation to situation, uh, but being leaders in our communities, it's really important to recognize and address this um, in order to uh, work through these effects and use them for our personal improvement. And so that's where the um, using adversity to fuel our growth comes in. So one thing that I think we can all um, attest to is that quarantine can quarantine kind of caused a lot of problems in people's lives, especially with um, different types of mental adversity. Um, I know personally, it's been a little weird, you know, withdrawing from friends. I consider myself an outgoing person. And so not having that social interaction and seeing my friends every day kind of um, kind of brought some sadness and a little bit of depression and with that um, and a lot of stress also with not knowing what hap what's coming in the future. Um, so luckily I got to sit down with my um, school's new social emotional counselor and kind of got to talk to her about this idea of stress management, what we can do to really help um, to help de-stress ourselves and to really help move past stress. And one thing that she talked about, um, especially was called the dread, it was, um, she talked about band-aids. And that is what we've all heard as our regular um, stress management tactics, go for a walk, take a deep breath. Um, meditation sometimes is another one that gets thrown out there a lot too. Um, and she talked about specifically moving away from band-aids, that Band-Aids are perfectly fine and they are good resources, um, but for the long haul, right, Band-Aids don't help. Um, they don't help and heal big wounds. Um, they're there for the small cuts. Um, right now, we're going through quarantine, or our school just got shut down and we're still trying to plan a homecoming. So we're all a bit stressed working on a two week deadline. So Band-Aids for that are really good, but when working in stress in the long term, like, um, an unknowing situation like a pandemic that um, it causes you to really need to, to reevaluate your, um, your approach to stress management. And one thing real quick before I move away from Band-Aids um, is I wanted to at least give away one, um, one good option and that's Headspace that I know I've used a little bit. Um, some people that I know have used Headspace and right now I know that it's paid. Um, you have to pay for a subscription, but because of coronavirus, they are offering some free resources. If you download the app or go on their website, if you just explore, there are two things right now going on. One of them is weathering the storm, which will remain free for a little bit, for um, a while longer. And another one is about like stressing during during, a, during this election cycle. So if, anyone, if that's of interest to anyone, I know that that's a resource that I use. Um, so I don't have to pay for the paid resource. Um, and it does, you know, it helps and it's actually a good Band-Aid. And I want to make sure before I continue that Band-Aids, like I'm not trying to ding Band-Aids, taking walks, deep breaths are really good for your mental health, eating healthier too. Um, but in the long haul, sometimes you've got to avoid the Band-Aids. One thing that she also brought up was sources of strength. Um, they've got some good resources too. I know we have social um, sources of strength installed in our school. And so they do have some good peer resources that if I can share after this as well, if you would like a direct link. One thing that she though talked about directly when we talked about getting away from band-aids was thinking traps, which is one thing that I, at least when she was explaining to me, like it clicked automatically in my head and I'm like, this is what I have to share with everyone. Oh, now it won't move. <sighs> there we go. So I got some pictures of some thinking traps that um, she finds people are, you know, most commonly, and I'll try to go through these, um, make sure that it's worth everyone's time. Um, but there's the all or nothing thinking trap, you know, um, if one friend gets angry at you, then you automatically think nobody likes me and nobody will like me. Um, or you have a presentation at school, which means you're either going to ace the presentation or flop, which we all know, you, you know, you can get in between an ace or a flop on a presentation. Um, another one is catastrophe. <laughs> catastrophizing, um, which is always imagining the worst case scenario first, which is easy, especially with um, coronavirus. Um, getting one bad grade means you won't get into a university and you'll end up homeless, right? That's not, getting one bad grade will not cause that. One, <laughs> another one is, oop, went backward, went forward. Another one is overestimating. <laughs> exaggerating the likelihood that something bad will happen. If you go, if you have another panic attack, you're gonna have a heart attack and die. I'm really trying to overreach with your guesses and thoughts, trying to um, 
find what's going to happen when in reality we know that um you know those you know small things like panic attacks are going to happen uh, fortune telling one that i have especially found myself doing right now during coronavirus i'm trying to predict the future none of us know what's going to happen with covid um, personally i found myself at the school on saturday we were decorating the halls for homecoming and then two hours after we i had just gotten home from decorating the hallways of school our whole school got shut down and we were all on quarantine um so you can't really predict the future and um it always is kind of damaging to try to predict the future because you you don't know um so one example is no one's going to talk to me at the party i don't know if no one's going to talk to you at the party um but especially right now especially in council we've been trying to to tell the future um, and it hasn't been working all too well for us. Um, the last two that I have in here is the negative brain filter, focusing really only on the negatives and not seeing the positives you can. Um, thinking about a question on a test that you couldn't answer rather than the ones you could. Um, for personally, I just took the, the PSA to a T a few weeks ago, um, and there are still those single questions ringing in my mind of why didn't I know how to use um, hyphens, right? You can't. You, but I knew how to use commas and stuff, right? So trying to focus on what is positive rather than focusing on all the negatives, because especially right now, um, there are a lot of negatives you can focus on, but really if you focus on the positives, you'll be able to get through this. Uh, and the last one is over generalizing or making really um, sweeping and rash judgments about um, specific things or about ourselves or about others um, based on only a few experiences without any like real grounds. Um, so one friend gets upset with you gets upset with you means you always screw up your friendships and have no real friends. You still have friends, um, but you know you've got some <laughs> you've got someone upset with you. Um, and so one thing that we ended our conversation with was identifying and addressing our thinking traps is really you just have to try to realize when you're in one of those thinking traps and um, working to get out of those thinking traps and move away from that because we found she found as a social emotional counselor for years is that thinking traps can be a lot of harm to students and can um, can wreck what a student thinks about themselves because they just don't get out of the trap. Um, and thinking trap sounds like saying it multiple times makes it sound funny, but um, personally, like I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, we've got something to fix here. Um, and really when it all comes down to it is not only do you have to figure out the solutions, but you know, Changing your mindset on stress is one thing that also she said um, will really help, of course. Um, once again, band-aids are great um, help, helpers, just not for a long haul kind of trip, right? Um, and changing the way, changing stress and the way that you approach stress is also about a game of changing your thinking. Um, if you approach stress negatively, it might end up hurting you in a negative way. And one thing that we had come up in our conversation was that um, not all stress is bad stress and you really have to either figure out what stress is good stress or work towards changing your mindset on stress in general as a whole topic and i have a, a quote in it as well this um hans selly is actually um was a big researcher into how stress affects humans and affects um how humans operate and live and um this quote says it's not stress that kills us, but our reaction to it. So we can always come out on the other side um, with stress still at, um, as our friend on the our side by side. We just have to be able to change our thinking as we approach stress in such a stressful time right now as well. You there, John? Oh, no. Am I back? Yes. OK, sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to kind of continue that conversation of changing the way that we think about stress and adversity um, so that we can use that for personal growth and improvement. And so I'm going to start that with this quote from Pema Shodran's book, um, only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible be found in us. 
And I know this kind of sounds like it should be from a superhero movie or something, um, talking about annihilation and stuff. Uh, so on the next couple slides, I'm going to kind of break it down um, on a level that we can better implement into our lives. If you want to go to the next. Cool. So first of all, experience adversity in our lives builds character. Um, it creates relatable leaders. If somebody has experienced the same thing that you're going through, it makes the whole situation easier. Um, and more often than not, someone has come across the same issue in the past or will in the future. Um, and so that's kind of a team building aspect to it. Um, then the next bullet point, uh, through struggle, we develop a greater understanding of hardship. Um, we are more prepared when we come across it again in those situations. And so that creates a sense of resilience. Um, it also strengthens our willpower in two main ways. Uh, the first is by making us more comfortable with the uncomfortable. I'm sure you've heard that before, but like with anything, if we experience something more, we're going to be more willing to be open to it. Um, and so then the other part of that is that we learn to accept the inevitable. It's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows, and I feel like the sooner that we kind of realize that, um, we'll be better off and we'll be able to be more successful in whatever our goals are. Um, another aspect to this is that we discover our true strengths. We find what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we also learn our limitations, which can be a harder part of it, but it's something that we all have to go through and figure out. Um, but the beauty in that is that we also learn about our maybe skills or talents that we didn't know that we had before. Um, and so that can really benefit the group as a whole. As Camden had talked about earlier, overcoming adversity also helps build external resources. Um, it forces people to reach out for help, create social networks, uh, and realize that we cannot and should not overcome our struggles alone. There's always gonna be somebody there um, supporting you, whether that's just someone to talk to or somebody giving you like crazy ideas for your new student council event. Um, and so kind of what I would like you to do with these bullet points is the next time that you come across something, um, what I like to call a speed bump in your life, I want you to write these down, address the situation and see how will this build my character? How does this create resilience and so on? Because I have found in my life that thinking about hard situations really kind of makes it a better situation in my book because it just changes my view on what's going on. And so that makes me more open to the positives. And so if you go to the next one, we'll kind of talk about that. And so then what are we gonna do with this? It's great that we can now understand that, but if we just stop there, we're not gonna get anywhere. And so one of the main things that I was thinking about was we see, we succeed because of adversity, not in spite of it. And so I promise I won't get all philosophical and tell you change your thinking and all your problems will be solved. But I truly think that if we refer to it as we don't succeed in spite of our challenges, but we see, succeed because of them, it is taking those first steps to adjusting to that adversity. Um, and so that brings me to my next point. Don't let challenges come to you. Seek them out. While acknowledging our limitations, finding new and enriching experiences is essential to our growth as leaders. And so when Camden and I were working on this presentation, Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, kept crossing my mind. And so if you haven't, heard that poem or read it before, I would highly suggest it. Um, it's super short and really kind of inspiring, but 
In the last few lines, it says, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. When I kind of reflected on this, I, I kind of took it as the easiest path may be the path of least resistance, but it's also going to be the path of least growth. And so I would suggest looking that, at that if you haven't and looking it up again if you already have and kind of thinking about that in the new perspective. And so then the last kind of thing is continuing this um, idea of seeking out and taking on these new challenges because something that we've especially found in my student council recently is it results in new ways of thinking um, and how we work and do business. Um, and so kind of in these next slides where we talk about what what's going on in our home councils, um, I'd like you to kind of think about the three E's of event, experience, and effects, um, and how those are playing out in our own lives. Yeah. So beginning with the main event, the pandemic. Um, I'm sure you guys have all, you're tired of hearing it by now, but it's an essential piece to our story. I mean, this is crazy and it's gonna go in the history books forever. Um, but our experience at Arvada West is a little different than some schools. And that's clear because no school is exactly the same. We have a little over 1800 students um, and we live in a relatively densely populated suburb of Denver. And so because of that, um, we can't do our traditional events or gatherings. Um, we're not allowed to meet outside of school very often. And at that, it's in very small groups. Uh, however, we still wanted to promote spirit and improve the culture and climate of our school um, in these trying times. Our solution, three weeks of homecoming. If anyone out there has ever planned a homecoming or any kinds of events, you know that that's just a crazy task to ask. But after we worked with our administration, we decided that we could come up with COVID friendly events, crazy amounts of spirit days, um, and some different takes on our traditional events that would still be acceptable um, with the restrictions that we were given, but still improve um, our school culture. And so our first of the three weeks, which began yesterday, is all Halloween competition, including pumpkin carving, card decorating, and then we're doing a costume competition. Next week is our most traditional week. Um, we're releasing short videos every day as a part of our virtual assembly. And so they'll have just the different parts of our assemblies just in like five minute sections. Um, and then we're doing our annual canned food drive will be starting. And so that's an easy thing that we just had to make mix around a couple things to accommodate uh, the guidelines and then we were set. And then we're also awarding our homecoming royalty, which is one of those traditional things, but we decided to base it more off of, um, or I guess less off of popularity and more off of ways that people give back to the community and stuff like that. And then our last week is community service based, which we're having a Veterans Day celebration. Um, we're holding a cell phones for soldiers drive where they take old cell phones and repurpose them so that uh, soldiers who are deployed can um, have contact with their families and such. And then we're doing restaurant fundraisers where we will be donating the money um, that we make from those to local nonprofits. And so kind of my big takeaway from all of this is that we have made completely new events. We've had creative twists on some of our traditional events. And then we've gained new techniques for planning and executing um, our responsibilities as members within our school. 
And so I think that's really important to look back um, on all of these things and what's happened, because if you're just going through the phases, then what's going to change in the future? Um, and so that's been kind of my takeaway from this whole experience. And Camden, if you want to go to yours, then. Alrighty, so Liberty was lucky enough to um, be able to go back to school. We have 1,700 students um, in a little less tightly packed area um, in a suburb of Colorado Springs. Um, we have 1,700 students. We're split into A and B groups. Some students have opted to be synchronous, which means they've taken, they um, join our Teams calls, but they do all their work from home. We also have our fully accelerated students, which is a program our district purchased so that students just do all their work online. They don't attend Teams classes. Um, it's fully self-paced, um, but they have, of course, like recommended things and they have deadlines to turn in. Liberty, uh, we were attempting limited in-person events. Um, we, um, this week was supposed to be our homecoming week as well. And one of the things that we were trying to plan was um, an actual homecoming royalty ceremony, homecoming royalty assembly like we normally would have. Um, we were going to do it outside uh, in our little like commons field area, all masks, socially distanced. I think we capped it at 150 people um, could sign up. Um, we would also have people performing like we normally would. We have our dance, um, we would have had our dance five class perform um, and a few other special things too. But we got quarantined, so that got moved. Um, and we're also luckily able to go to football games like normal. You just have to reserve your ticket beforehand. You can buy it there. I think those are also capped at 150. Um, I'm trying to think of any other in person events we've been trying to host. We've been trying to figure it out. And now that um, El Paso County, our county, might be getting new guidelines, we might have to reevaluate all of those, which is going to be so much fun to go back and look at. Um, one thing that I've been working on personally within my council for a really long time and something that is now actually coming to fruition. Um, we've been working with a company called Spirit. Um, they have, they make what's called, what we've been calling the Spirit app. Um, and I call it Remind on Steroids. Um, and it's a really nice new resource because what we found is students in our school have gotten really tired of using Remind or burnt out of using Remind because it's all normally used for academic purposes, right? Teachers will, who have hard classes or any classes really will just make a Remind. Uh, have their students sign up so they can send them reminders and stuff, as well as all of the activities will uh, activities will use Remind to get out messages to their people as well. Um, but they weren't checking Remind as much anymore, and we wanted to really try to revamp the whole system and see if we could um, if, see if there was anything we could use. Um, and the Spirit app, luckily, was something that we found really quickly, and we've been working on getting before quarantine. It got put on hold during quarantine, and now we picked it back up once we came back and. Um, we just launched it last week, um, and it has been so nice. Um, you can uh, throw out announcements with there from it, make little um, banners using a thing, um, using a, a digital design software. You can send out announcements to the students, send out messages to the students. Um, we also at Liberty use class competitions a lot during homecoming and other th um, and during other times of the year to get students engaged, and so. You can actually run um, class competitions through the Spirit app as we've been doing also remote um, events like a school-wide Kahoot and um, we had a Zumba class. So what you would do in those cases is you would either take a picture of yourself being at that event or um, depending on what type of event it is, like if it was a football game, we would have a geotag for just the stadium area. So once you're in the stadium, you would check in and you would get points for your class towards your class competitions. Um, if it was through, if it was one of the things where you had to submit a picture, we have a Google or Microsoft form attached to it where you submit a picture and then we would go in and personally assign you points for that day. Um, and so far it's actually been a really nice resource, especially with um, quickly shutting down the school and moving everything. We've been able to push things out to the students in a lot faster way than um, either relying on Remind, which we found has been down a lot recently, or um, we have things called 20 alerts, which only go to parents and no one likes Schoology messages so lots of times they don't read those at all so it's been really nice to um, 
have a new resource that we can use with the students, especially something that normally we would have to do in person. Um, I remember sitting outside football games, counting how many people for each class came in. Um, and now you don't have to you register for your class. You once you're there, you check in with your um, location and you are all good and ready to go with earning your class points. Once again, we're getting creative with <laughs> plans, events, much like um, much like Arvada West and John talked about. Um, we've been trying to trying to come up with new ways to engage students. Like I said, we had a, a Zumba class. We had a remote Zumba class where our dance teacher taught something from um, taught something from the studio, which was really nice and a lot of fun. Um, we had a we had a school wide Kahoot plan. Um, we I'm trying to remember all of them. We were going to have a drive in movie. That got canceled because it was supposed to take place during a homecoming week. Once again, we had our um, our homecoming ceremony. We had a whole we had spirit weeks planned. We tried to figure out ways to get spirit um, like a spirit day every week, um, the day that students were like kind of engaged but not really engaged in class. Um, and really, that's what it's taken for all of us to um, to adjust to coronavirus is just throwing ourselves out there fully and you know putting all ideas out there and holding nothing back. Because if you hold back in the situation, um, especially with what we found in our council is that really like, it's just, it's just limiting us. So we've thrown out every idea, taken every idea into consideration. And, you know, maybe one time we were told that we couldn't have more than 25 people in a room. And then we go back and say, hey, can we do this? And our, ad our admin say, yeah. And so we've been really trying to work closely with our administration too, and trying to figure out what exactly we can and can't do and what is or isn't acceptable. Um, and yeah, we had our, our sad and short-lived attempt, at attempt at a homecoming. Um, what we had planned was instead of having a dance, um, what we were going to try to do was have almost a drive up homecoming is what we had been referring to it as in council. Um, we had two different areas set up around our school. Um, one in the main entrance and one by our pool entrance, which are um, basically on other sides of the campus for us. Um, we would have photographers up and um, you would pull up with your date. Um, they had to be from the school. They couldn't be from the outside school. Um, you pull up with your date, you get out, you can take pictures all dressed out um, by these professional photographers um, and then go. There are food trucks in the parking lot, which you can um, get food from then you can leave and they'll be um, well um, we're using our sound system to be playing uh, music so that we can also kind of have that that homecoming feel to it um, and we're but we are going to be able to do that once we get back to school uh, it's just really coming up with all of ideas i know that our our president has been talking with all the other presidents in our district and in our area trying to all collaborate on ideas and come up with each other which is really what it's taking is it's being collaborative and being willing to put your ideas out on the line and say, this is what we've got. What else do you've got? Where can we find common ground? What are some good ideas that can come from this? Um, and moving forward from there, really. Ah, oh, yes, Kahoot. Oh, I skipped to the next. Even better. All righty. I love Kahoot. Okay. This is in the way and I don't like it. I'm so sorry. This is going to be fun for all of us. I've never hosted a Kahoot remote before. One on one, of course. All right, can everyone see it? Can you see it, John? Oh, people are joining. That's perfect. That's exactly what I needed to see. Just another two of you. Do you want me to delete one? Yeah, I don't know why there's two. <laughs> somebody, somebody might have put my name in there. That's me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Justin, to try to win. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty competitive, so I'm going to get a third one going. All 
Alrighty, we've got 28 people. Oh wait, we should subtract out. We've got 26 people. All righty, I'm gonna give it another minute. All right, John, you ready? Yep, I'm good. Okay, I am going to start the game. If anyone's joining, I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna keep it moving. <laughs> For false, the only way is to have more of it. Oh, but that's amazing. Man. Ah, yes. Thank you for getting that all right. And go, Madeline, in the lead. True or false thinking traps can be avoided. I just said that one explicitly. Ah, oh, one person. That is always okay. I can't say that I didn't say that explicitly. So that is my bad. But yeah, sinking traps can be avoided and caught. It goes with that idea of changing your mindset, changing how you think, and really being able to um, at least catch yourself in the act is one thing that um, can be really helpful in avoiding stress and avoiding those thinking traps. Ooh, my line, keeping the lead. Which of the following are not major takeaways from growing? So John, I know this is one of yours. Do you want to? Yeah, and so, sorry. And like I was kind of talking about before, we succeed because of it, not in spite of it. And so thinking kind of with a positive mindset is important in this situation. Ooh, Madeline lost the lead, but Justin's on the leaderboard. Wait. I think that's Rashawn who's on the leaderboard. <laughs> I'll, I'll take credit. What are the three E's? Of oh, that makes one. Once again, John. <laughs> and so this one again, event, what's going on? Experience, how are your personal um, factors in your life affecting that? And then what is coming in from that? I line back with the lead. Which of the following is not a way in which it versus Mm. 
Nice. I did a lot of true or false questions. Quarantine brought up problems with people. Oh, whoever that one person is, is an extremely lucky person or they just misclicked, but either way, very lucky. Let's keep it moving. Which of the following is not, is not a possible effect of adversity? That we Yeah, so we didn't really specifically go over this one, but this is one where it's like, it makes sense. If you're not going to do anything about it, nothing's going to happen. All righty. True or false? Band-aids are acceptable tools to make. False, I thought I said it enough. Well, just to clarify, Band-Aids are acceptable tools to manage stress. I know right now I'm relying on Band-Aids to get through these next few weeks where we have really stressful things planned. Um, but when you have time that you can dedicate, especially to just yourself and being able to, um, to manage that stress and move past that stress, um, that's when getting through those those thinking traps and really changing your thinking and using your resources to the fullest extent to get to change your thinking and to um, get out of that stress. Um, that's the I would call it preferred, right? Band-aids are access are acceptable, but changing your thinking is preferred. Okay, I'm gonna try to say that it's Shinel. You're doing great. True or false? Mental adversity includes. Nice, 100%, that's what we like to see. What are some examples of Okay, so I tried to make this the first question. I tried to make the questions in order of the presentation and I didn't know they shuffled them until I started it and realized that that's probably how that works. So this one was supposed to be the beginning, a nice little easy, easy throwaway question. But yes, all of them are examples of physical adversity. And I'm sorry if I tricked anyone, they all work. <laughs> nice, Chanel back in the lead. Last question, social, social adversity can people's lives. Yes, so just to clarify once again, Social adversity, what I was saying with that was um, lacking or um, being very limited in your social interaction or um, facing something that would cause social adversity can really limit your, um, and being limited in your social skills can limit um, people from making friends, good decisions, jobs, maintaining a family thing, um, really just limiting, limiting your social interactions and um, the opportunities that can come from that um, social adversity. 
already the podium. Third place. Way to go, Simon. Um, um, Umar. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce my phone so bad. And Shinel. Huh. Go, y'all. Well, I'm gonna go back to the presentation real quick. That's not what I wanted to do. Go back to the presentation. And there we go. We put our contact information in there, just in case after this presentation, you had any more questions you came up, wanted to talk to us about our own school's events and things. Um, you wanted to reach out to us. We gave you as many different ways for you to reach out as possible. But does anyone have any questions or anything they want to talk about or bring up? If not, thank you all for coming and listening. Um, yeah. I know I enjoyed putting this on um, and working with Camden. So thank you guys. Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate it. It's nice to have an audience and see people for once. All right, does anyone have any questions for, I know if you wanna ask, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, if you do have any questions for John or Camden before we, before we sign off. All right, well, i tell you what, if not, then uh, go ahead and end tonight's webinar. John, Ken, you guys did uh, a really, really great job. Appreciate uh, you sharing some of your experience with, experiences with everyone and um, look forward to seeing some of you guys back uh, tomorrow for um, our advisor webinar. So thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much, everyone. See you guys. Thank you,